Ask your doctor or pharmacist if Pharmadynamics has an affordable generic suitable for you. PMS means many things to many people. Uh, it could stand for pass my shotgun, psychotic mood shift, pardon my sobbing, puffy midsection, or my particular favorite, potential murder suspect. <laughs> Premenstrual syndrome is a combination of emotional, physical, psychological, and mood disturbances that occur after a woman's ovulation and normally ends with the onset of her menstruation. PMS remains an enigma because of the wide-ranging symptoms and the difficulty in making a firm diagnosis. Several theories have tried to explain the cause of PMS, but none of these have been proven and specific treatment for PMS still largely lacks a solid scientific basis. It's estimated that as much as 95% of women in their reproductive years experience premenstrual stress or premenstrual syndrome, and that's nothing to shrug off, is it, Dr. Reef? As you said, is it really a syndrome? Is it really an illness? Should we really be treating women? Because we don't know enough about it okay. in terms of clinical diagnosis, and we don't even know what causes it, and we don't even know how to really treat it. What we do know is that it is really bothersome mm -hmm. to these 93 or 95% of women that you spoke yeah. about. The hallmark of the diagnosis of PMS is that symptom-free interval after your menstruation and prior to the next ovulation. If there's no such interval and the symptoms persist throughout the cycle, then PMS may not be the proper diagnosis. But assuming it is, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Eve, what are the more common symptoms? There are psychological symptoms and there are physical symptoms. So women will report that they feel tetchy, and I love that word, it's mm. so American, but it's like really captures how a woman feels. Yeah. Irritable and kind of angry and then sad and depressed and her mood is just absolutely unpredictable. And that has impact on her relationships, meaning sure. her family, friends or, or partners who she has in her life. So she feels suddenly like she's, shooting a gun, like her moods are all over the show, there's no sense of control. And then physically, there's a sense of bloatedness, tenderness, nipple, nipple sensitivity, breast sensitivity, and just feeling like just not feeling well. And then terrible menstrual pain, cramps in the, in the lower abdomen, and how to get rid of that and how to deal with that becomes very problematic. So even though we don't have a clinical diagnosis for it, we don't know what causes it and how to really treat it, we do know that clinically we would look at for three criteria in order to say that a woman is really suffering from PMS. So the first thing would be, as, you, as we say now, the, the symptoms, the psychological and the physical symptoms, but more the psychological symptoms. And as you correctly said as well, they have to be within a certain time frame. If a woman has these feelings all the time, of course we're going to look at other kind of disorders sure. or other kind of, dis any kind of illnesses that may be Depression prevailing. Depression would do something. something Absolutely. Like, yeah. And anxiety might also be really the underlying cause of it. So that's the first thing is, does she have the psychological symptoms? And then it is the timing of it. So it's going to be two weeks after ovulation, about five days before her next expected bleeding, and then it'll begin to ease as soon as she starts bleeding, the menstruation has settled in. That'll be a sign that this is probably PMS. And then the third and very important factor is does it cause bother and distress in mm. the management of her everyday life? Because some women just say, well, I can cope with it. And others women say, it really it gets me to leave work. I, I can't go to work every day because I'm not able to function pr properly. I have so much pain. And also my relationships really suffer. And then, of course, there's a sexual element to it. And even though we don't have research that says exactly that it's going to lower your, your libido or increase your libido, because research actually shows us that every woman has a different relationship mm. to their sexuality at that time because of the mix of hormones. And, and, and what's a husband to think? You know, his wife doesn't like him, is angry with him, wants to bite his head off. And, and she's feeling like she's feeling. She's I mean, wanting to have sex. No wonder we confused as husbands. I mean, it's like, you know, <laughs> huh? Do we, don't we, you know? Exactly right. So, you know, what do you do around that? Now, interestingly enough, one of the things that takes away pain yeah. is being orgasmic. Because okay. what that does is it releases certain hormones that takes away and diminishes pain. Yeah, yeah. Oxytocin. Exactly. Endorphin. We know exactly. about those. Exactly. Yeah. So those things will take away the pain. So when a woman says, I'm struggling terribly with PMS pain, so the best thing to do is to have an orgasm. And that will bring you in wonderful sense of relief and wonderful sense of serotonin and okay. good feelings that will then take away some of the pain. I and like that suggestion. I was going to suggest oh, exercise you know, and proper <laughs> diet. But, you know, you win. <laughs> your, your suggestion, Dr. E, takes first prize. Okay. Uh, there aren't any guidelines that say no. to us definitively this treatment is going to work. So we know exercise is good for you, full stop. Sure. So try and do more exercise because it's like having sex. You're mm. kind of releasing the same hormones That's at right. the time. So you're going to have a release of, of re relief of pain 
pain and release, release of more serotonin, which is a good idea. So how treatment has been done right now is people would perhaps a medical health care provider would give somebody a combined oral contraceptive pill because mm. perhaps that would level out the progesterone because That's progesterone right. is a problem over here. Or else an antidepressant, an SSRI. The suggestion is treat the symptoms. That's right. And people are at sixes and sevens. You know, such mm -hmm. a wide variety of symptoms. Mm -hmm. Treatment is all over the place. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want to ask about partners. You know, how yeah, do we exactly. deal with PMS? So what do you suggest? The suggestion is really to keep a diary. And one thing I object to, and Hang really, on a second. So you're saying as a husband, I keep a diary no, my wife? No, I just okay. came to say, <laughs> do not do that. That's the thing that I object to. Thank you for that. Okay. Because I, I have too many men who control their woman's sexuality and their sexuality that way. So they'll kind of have it up on the fridge and tick off all the times they're having sex work. and then they'll know this is a time when she's expected to be having her menstruation. She's going to have her PMS five days before and they start preparing themselves. But it might be quite a negative thing for a woman to see. A woman has to take responsibility for that herself and say, this is how I usually respond about five days before I'm expected to have my menstruation. I'm going to manage myself by letting people around me know, actually, I'm expected to go through a dip and this is what I need. I need extra help from you. I'm interested in being sexual. I'm not interested in, interested in being sexual. Yes, take care of household tasks for me, just to work cooperatively with the partner, so that the partner is okay. also involved and that there isn't, there isn't expectation from him, like, okay, so I know this is what's happening, and let's not personalise this, and let me be part of this. Dr. E, thank you. Always lovely, candid, practical advice. I so appreciate that. I, uh, I think, you know, in general, the medical pro profession is saying these are things you can do for PMS. Stop smoking. I think that we would agree on that. Research has, in fact, shown that those who smoke are more than twice as likely to develop moderate or severe PMS uh, than those who don't smoke. Stay active. We talked about that. Many women find that aerobic exercise helps ease sadness and, and even anxiety, which are both common symptoms of PMS. I'd say limit alcohol and caffeine. Both contribute to a PMS roller coaster. You can try some supplements. I think calcium has been shown to ease symptoms of PMS for some women. Uh, researchers have found that omega-3s can also lessen irritability and reduce aches associated with PMS. But uh, I, I still like Dr. Eve's first prize, man, an orgasm. I mean, how wonderful, you know. If you're still not sure that you have PMS, I'll give you the most definitive sign is that your husband is suddenly agreeing with everything you say. And husbands, one of the smartest things you can do at this time is to make dinner. How you ask, <laughs> don't ask me, ask Justine. Ask your doctor or pharmacist if Pharma Dynamics has an affordable generic suitable for you. I want to live the best life.